We've got another Cleveland Brown signing in NFL free agency. We're going to break it down and more on today's Browns report. Welcome in, Matthew Peterson. Not as excited as the Juan Thornhill signing, if I'm being honest here. I always want to be optimistic about moves the Browns make, but this one... I hate to break it to you. I don't think it's going to do much for the Browns in the long run. But let's get to know Tristan Hill. So, Ian Rappaport tweeting out that former Cowboys defensive end Tristan Hill is expected to sign with the Browns. Source said, another addition to their defensive line, a former second-round pick. He also spent time with the Cardinals last year. So, Tristan Hill, like Rappaport said, used to be with the Dallas Cowboys. He was a second round pick out of for their second round pick of theirs out of, I think, Central Florida. And let's be honest, if you know anything about Tristan Hill and his time with the Cowboys, it wasn't good. He wasn't a very good player for them. He wasn't very productive on the field whatsoever. There were some questions about his motivation and his power and willpower to improve as an NFL player. He was claimed by the Cardinals this past season in November when Dallas decided to, they've had enough with the former second-round pick. His season was cut short with a knee injury at the end of December. So we're going to break down this move and more with some stats and talk about free agency in general. But are the Browns set now in free agency, right? They have made a number of signings, and maybe this is the last notable-ish one. I'm sure they'll add more guys to fill out the 90-man roster by the time August rolls around. But is this the last one that we really talk about and break down in a video? Is Are they set? Let me know why for yes or N for no. So Tristan Hill, the last four seasons, guys, the stats speak for themselves, right? If anyone is going to try and present to you Tristan Hill is an immediate contributor and starter on this team, I think they're lying to you, okay? He had... One and a half career sacks through four seasons so far. He has struggled staying on the field. He has struggled with what some call an effort issue. This is a low-risk, medium-at-best reward type of signing. I hate to be the Debbie Down or the Rain Cloud, but no, I can't pretend like every single signing is going to be a Pro Bowl signing for the Browns. The expectations, in my opinion, are his salary, and that is likely... Vet minimum. So if he's getting paid two to three million dollars, if that, fine by me. I'm expecting two to three million dollars ish worth of production out of him. So this is not a move that I think is going to push the Browns defensive line over the edge. I think this is probably another camp body, some competition as Jim Schwartz and this defense are going to try and get the best out of not well, Dalvin Tomlinson's a lot, but I'm talking the lower level guys of. Uh, Jordan Elliott, Tommy Togiai, and now Tristan Hill kind of added to the mix. Now listen, when breaking news happens, no matter how big or small the signing is, we're going to keep you covered here at the channel, which is why you have to subscribe. Join our growing Cleveland Browns family here at the Browns Report by Chat Sports. Hit that sub button and don't miss a thing when it comes to your brownies. So let's run through some free agency tracker stuff here. For the Browns. So, Ethan Posick, three year, 18 million deal. I like it a lot. I think the Browns sure up their offensive line, and it was obvious that without him last year, things were a bit rocky in the run department. Obo Okoronko comes over from, am I getting that right? I really hope so. Uh, Okoronko comes over from Houston. He definitely is an ascending player. There's a lot of positivity and buzz around this move. I'm very curious to see if he is the predominant starter at defensive end, or is it going to be a bit of a committee job with Alex Wright and Isaiah Thomas filling in, maybe another rookie or another free agent signing? Dalvin Tomlinson, that's a great signing. Love that. A real run stopper for a change. Taki Taki comes back, joins the linebacker room, which is low-key a little bit thin right now. Maybe the Browns will use some early draft capital on it. And then the one that... <laughs> I just couldn't fall asleep last night because I was watching Juan Thornhill highlights. Three years, 21 million. I think this is a great addition by the Browns. This defense now, I think, is really stacked and really put together and can actually hopefully meet the expectations that were laid out for them last year. And most recently, Tristan Hill, which, eh, it's just, it's just that, right? But here's how the defensive line depth chart shakes out, in my opinion. Um, Miles Garrett... Jordan Elliott, Perrion Winfrey, Oboe. I think those are your four starters right now. 
Toss Tristan Hill behind Alex Wright as you got some depth down there. Maurice Hurst, who was signed yesterday, will throw his stats on screen later on. Togi and Ben Stilley, so that's how the defensive line is shaken out. Probably one more addition coming there, likely in the draft. I'd be surprised if we get another free agent signing on the defensive line. We're going to recap some more on free agency for you guys in just a quick moment. But spring is coming. Right, And the way I like to approach spring is I like to wear it into existence. Meaning, if I want it to be warm outside, I'm wearing a Browns t-shirt. So if you are on the same page with me, get this awesome Cleveland Browns retro t-shirt. It's at chatsports.com slash CLE shirt. I put that link for everyone in the comments and the description of today's show. Let's talk about some free agency moves that I think really are going to make a difference in 2023. How about Dalvin Tomlinson? I'm just going to continue to look at his stats and continue to look at that big, beautiful face of his because it will not be smiling when he meets Joe Mixon or whoever in the middle of the line of scrimmage. No, he is going to be an absolute run stuffer. And then coming over from the Texans, originally with the, with the Rams, it is Obo Okoronoko. Did I get that right, Coop? Okoronkwo. Well, he was at Oklahoma, and Chat Sports is based in Dallas. So the office is pretty split between Texas and Oklahoma. All the Oklahoma guys in the office rave about him. All the Texas guys in the office hate him. So to me, that tells me he was probably pretty good. Hopefully, we can get that kind of production in Cleveland. Then, most recently, last night, another signature, Andrew Barry, 11.30 p.m. signing. I had to pause Outer Banks in the last episode, too, so you guys know I'm committed. Maurice Hurst, 78 career tackles. He had a really good start to his career with the Raiders. Unfortunately, he's played, I think I said, 13 games since 2020. Missed all of last season with torn triceps. Former Michigan Wolverine was originally supposed to be a first, maybe second round draft pick, ended falling all the way to round five due to some uh, medical concerns. But if that first round potential can be untapped in Cleveland, man, that's going to be a really good sneaky pickup for the Browns. So the news one more time here, the Browns added Tristan Hill. I think my reaction sort of tells you what my expectations are for Tristan Hill on this team, which is, hey, if you can make one big move, one big play at some key moment, I'll eat all my words. But for now, no, I'm not going to just sit around and do an elephant walk around this guy and pretend like this is an absolute A-plus signing and he's going to come in and put up huge numbers. No, this is another camp body probably that's there for competition and maybe we're going to get one more run-stopping defensive lineman because that's not really his forte. But listen, Andrew Barry, it seems like he does have a type. And that type is former top picks that other teams think are done that he looks to resurrect. Tack McKinley, we've got this guy now, Tristan Hill. So he's got a type, right? Some like blonde, some like brunettes. He likes former first and second round picks that other, th other teams deemed washed that Maybe are washed, but hey, if you can squeeze a season out of them for the contract you're giving, I'm not going to stop you. Appreciate you for tuning into today's show. I'll see you guys later, hopefully. By the way, if you're watching right now, you've made it this far in the video. Let's end with this. None of the YouTube blah, blah, blah stuff. Someone give me a March Madness upset for tomorrow, Friday. I when it's all over West Virginia. And now, financially, I'm not in a good spot. So someone please get me back from the red. I need a win tomorrow. So if you're watching all the way to the end, you're a real one. I need a lock. And if they lose, I'm coming for you.